They're the Jolly Green Giants. Only shooting stars break the Hello everybody and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian and today I'm playing Oyer Kaslim Deepest Growth. This is the green god from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. And when she hits your opponents, you get to get a creature and a land from the top cards of your deck. And the number of cards that you are looking at is based on the amount of damage she deals. Because she's got trample, she's already very good at getting damage through. And she's a five mana six five on top of that. But in case that wasn't enough, we've got lots of ways in this deck to make all your Kaslam hit for more damage. Cards like Unnatural Growth to double up her power. Same with God Eternal Ronus and Zoprindel. Two of those, by the way, being creatures, also mean that you can get them by hitting your opponent with Oyer Chasm. Oyer Chasm is kind of cheating some things into play, which means that you can put in some very, very high cost creatures. And you probably should because this deck has a base early deck of mono green ramp because sometimes you just got a ramp. And the earlier you can get Oyer Chasm out, the more likely you are to be able to hit your opponent and get a big start. We also have some of the uh, best green card draw available to us. Things like Tribute to the World Tree or Beast Whisper, and of course, everybody's favorite, the Great Henge. So where is it? There is it. I love a good henge. We also have some other just big things we're ramping into like Portal of Tephyrexia and of course, all these big creatures up here, Nissa as well. But if you'd like to, you can even put some Eldrazi into your deck. They're big, they're strong, they're good. They're just not my personal favorite. I would rather play big green stuff than big colorless stuff. So we're going to take all your Kaslam into the queue and we're going to hit our opponents so we can get even more big green creatures. Slimefoot and Squee. Slimefoot and Squee is a reanimator commander. You put things in the graveyard, you kill your own commander, and then you sacrifice a sapling, play four mana, and bring your commander and whatever the thing in your graveyard is back to the battlefield. I like this hand because it had some turn one ramp. Always good to have. Uh, especially because we can go turn one ramp into turn two, either ramp or tribute to the world tree to set up for some card draw. Uh, if I get Selvala down next turn, it does mean we could, on turn three, get down Oyer Kaslam. They'd probably also get to draw a card, though. So I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to play tribute to the world tree. Um... And the reason for this is because Tribute to the World Tree is going to put counters on our small creatures, but let our big creatures draw us cards. Small creatures that have plus one, plus one counters on them, like Incubation Druid, get an extra bonus because this one actually taps for more mana if it has counters on it, which is just great. Nykthos is actually going to generate net mana for us because of our enchantments. So we can use this first. And that gives me a net five mana, either for all your Kaslam. That was a great Nykthos draw, by the way or two pieces of ramp. Or we could go like Nylia into Incubation Druid. I like Nylia into Incubation Druid. Let's go. Big Incubation Druid. I do like Brass's uh, tunnel grinder here. Let them discard some cards. They have two big boys in the graveyard now. Cavalier of Night, Thorn Mammoth. Yeah, Tribute to the World Tree is great for generating um, devotion, both for Nykthos and for Nylia. Uh, do I feel like just drawing some cards? Do I feel like blasting some stuff? Um, I like drawing cards. Point two, tap me for three. Get that eight. Selvala first. Into Oyer Kaslam, who will be the biggest creature on the board power wise. Would I like to draw a card? Of course I'd like to draw a card. Oh, look at that. We get an extra forest too. We can give everybody some extra trample. Bringing out Gwenna. Drawing even more cards. We have a hoof available for next turn. Now they could have a board wipe. That is always something that could happen. Just keep drawing. Just keep blasting. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack in. See if they're interested in blocking and reanimating. It looks like the answer is no. Ooh, sacrificing their slime foot and squee for two mana. Gotta use that uh, Phyrexian Tower. Are they bringing back something like the Mammoth? The Mammoth would get up to two fights because slime foot and squee comes with another uh, Tapperling token. But who do you fight here? I think Beast Whisperer, Selvala, those are two good choices. Cut me off from mana. But if they uh, don't reduce our devotion by enough, like we're just huffing. I also, I didn't even mention in the intro that Oyer Kaslam, if she dies, turns into a land. I can put her back into the command zone, but she turns into a land, you know, for more ramp, for more big boys. All right, can you stop my onslaught? They don't know what I have in hand. They don't know about the hook. So we're gonna start by using this Nykthos here for a whole bunch of mana. We're gonna pop down the Crater Hoof Behemoth. Oh yeah, because I could have used the Gwenna. I really don't need to. We have enough mana to win this game. Swing it in for tons of damage. GG, slime foot and squee. Madric, Astral Archmage. Madric is a spell discounting commander. And if you get him down nice and early, he can even start triggering a day-night cycle. And that day-night cycle is going to keep growing Badrick. The bigger he gets, the more the spells are discounted, which means that they can cast either lots of big spells or even more small spells. I would say typically Badrick is either Storm or is it Control, which kind of look the same in Arena, just because we don't have that many big Storm cards. We'll see what this is going to... Uh is going to end up playing. A Boreal Grazer. I'm going to name God since we have two gods here. Looking good. Go get him, Kami of Bamboo Groves. I actually probably should have, like, led with this and kept that in hand. It's pretty hard to kill, um... 6-5 uh, with burn, but they can bounce it back into my hand if they can't counter it. Also, I just noticed they would have been able to counter it because it used the Castle Garenbrig and not the Cavern of Souls. <laughs> Arena, you goblin. Born upon a wind. Woo! They drew a card. That makes me think it might be Storm. It's daytime! But it won't be daytime for long. Uh, I will go for Ronus. Because I want that double double. I will swing in with. Oh, sure, the Kami of Bamboo Groves can go. You know what? I should have attacked with the Grazer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Grazer. I should have attacked with you. We're going to look at the top 12 cards of our deck and we're going to see what we get. Oh. Perfect. Galta. And this Galta is the one that lets me put all the creatures from my hand into play. Also grab some forests. Yes, very good. I didn't actually play one of those yet. But yeah, we, we got a Seraph, we got Galta. We, we have a small army. It's turn four? I think this is turn four. Good Lord, what is happening in here? You know, green things. You got a magical five mana spell. They could use something like Infuriate uh, to make Vadric have a very high power and then cast something like River's Rebuke on a discount. Looks like they're going for Pirate's Pillage. They're digging. Gotta love green. Gotta love when green does green stuff. You think I'm at a slight advantage? Yeah, you know, the game really could go either way. GG, Badrick. Professor Onyx. She has Magecraft, which drains you for two life when you cast an instant or sorcery, or copy an instant or sorcery, and she can make you sacrifice your biggest creature. If she gets to ult, then you have to pay a lot of life, sacrifice a lot of things, kind of depending on what you've got left to give. Uh, this is a good hand since it has ramp into ramp into ramp into Zoprindel. Uh, hey, Thoughtseize. You gonna hit my turn one ramp? Okay, that's entirely fair. That 
seriously slows down my game plan because now I can't get down a turn two Gwenna. Oh, turn two Gwenna would have been so good. Um, land Ward Loam Speaker, if it lands, might be killed. Lots of removal in black. So much removal in black. Grabbing this Gwenna. And I guess I'll swing in with the Landward Alone Speaker. Yeah, there's one card in black with Storm in Arena. Uh, Endrils. If you're wondering, like, what cast or copy goes there, that works. Oh, there's another one with, like, Pseudo Storm, I think. Uh, this black card that draws cards, but you have to sacrifice for each one. Okay, uh, go for a double sacrifice there. Taking out both my creatures, I'm going to throw down the one ring, even though the protection probably isn't going to protect me from anything. If they have any discard spells here, unless they're non-targeting, this won't be able to hit me. Ah, a ring for a ring. Is Chain of Smog an arena? It is not. Um, let's go for... Oh, you're Kaslam. If they have removal, they have removal. But we can always turn her into a land if they kill her rather than exile her. And then use her to cast some of these bigger spells. Sedgemore Witch, also a Magecraft in black. I'll swing in with Oyer Kaslam. We hit for six. See what we got here. Oh. Oh. Hmm. So we do have our big Eldrazi. Cityscape leveler. Boring Clex. Because I'm not tapped at all yet. Yeah, um, we're going to generate a slightly obscene amount of mana here. Now our opponent sees the writing on the wall. We're going to be drawing a lot of cards, playing a lot of creatures, winning this game. GG, Professor Ronix. Amalia. Hey there, Amalia. Amalia explores when you gain life, looking at the top card, putting it into your hand, if it's a land, or choosing to either keep it on top or put it into the graveyard otherwise. Uh, Amalia is pretty cool because she's an Orzhov life gain commander and a very strong one. She gets really, really big. And if you happen to get her to 20 power and explore, she destroys all other creatures. So she can swing in for lethal. She's pretty sweet like that. Uh, well, I can ramp, so we're going to ramp. We're going to go Delighted Halfling into a Cultivate. Putting even more lands into play. So on turn three, we will have five mana, which is the perfect amount for all your Kaslam. This is my Brawl Room Blitz. Yeah, with the, with the speed of this ramp. Hi, Boromir. Boromir stops spells from being cast for free, but we don't really cast spells for free in this deck. We just put them into play using Argar Kaslam. Uh, putting into play, not stopped by Boromir. Um, I'm a little afraid of kill, though, so hopefully they don't kill or exile Argar Kaslam. If they do, because of the strength of my hand, uh, I might just let her turn into a land. Ooh, okay. They're making themselves a pride mate. So when they gain life, the kitty cat grows and Amalia might grow. Depends on if it's a land on top. It is not a land. It's Dactos who goes into the graveyard. And now they'd just be able to block all your Kaslam. So let's just make an obscene amount of mana. Nissa, who shakes the world. Untapping a forest. And I feel Gore Claw, so I can go for Vorinclex. But Invasion of Zendergar, also really tasty. Yeah, she is Nissa who shakes my world. Deep Cavern Bat's going to let them exile one of these three spells. They duressed my hand, so my turn timber symbiosis is gone. Oh, my cool big mana sinks. They're sunk! Boromir can make creatures indestructible, so if they swing with everything, uh, they could go for that. Nope, looks like they're just defending and growing!
Grix Uprising. Let's draw a card. I think a green card draw engine sounds pretty good. Ooh, another green card draw engine, by which I mean a colorless card draw engine. Also gives me protection. Doesn't protect Nissa though. Nice, the Defiler! Love it! This is going to give me a way to beef up my creatures. I'll use the Halfling for this. Draws me another card. It's another land. Um, I'll just go ahead and pay the four since I don't think the two life would make a difference here. All these get beefed up. Beef acquired. More lands acquired. Yes, I kind of like attacking here. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go for the attack. Try to keep the way from that speaker of heavens. Oh, they just let the whole thing. Yeah, I thought they were gonna block with like the kitty cat. Wow, at least we uh, didn't get a very interesting hit there, the arboreal grazer. We have Rampin. They'll be, they'll be able to activate the Speaker of the Heavens if they plus. And plus they have! Which will give them angels! But I can block the 1-1 flyers now. Yay! I can't block the 4-4 flyers without my sloth dying. Aww. Would tipping the invasion trigger the Defiler? Yes, this is a green permanent being cast. But I didn't really want to try to get that hit. Alright, so let's block the hawk. And one goes through. Life gain is happening. I think you keep that virtue of persistence on top. Oh, they disagree. They might be trying to get the Zajani ult to fire. I respect it. I respect it. Titan of Industry. Nice. I'm going to draw two cards. Yeah, you can gain a life. Mm-hmm. Nice. Angel of Vitality gains you even more life. Beastie boy. Oh, we're paying life. I want to see how deep I can go. Also, how big I can go. I should probably be animating the land so it's getting into counters. Uh, this one. More life, please. We're gonna make the beastie since it will trigger things. We're gonna destroy their spectrum sentinel. Grips our uprising does trigger on tokens, which is nice. And I still have 10 mana. More if I'm willing to tap these guys. We draw. We draw. We got booties. Booties don't draw me cards, but they do give me more damage. And damage can be good. Uh, if that's what I think we should be doing. I'll go for it. Hey, everyone! Get in here! Everything that is at least a 4-4 four four is gonna get plus one, plus one in Trample. But they do have two 9-9s, nine nines, and the ability to make things indestructible. Also this 4-4. Four four. Yeah, flipping this would get me one extra uh, draw, since it would trigger the uh, Grux Uprising. But it also wouldn't keep them away from the Ajani ult, which... Creature's expendable. We, we just want all your Chasm to do damage. So we have a chance of getting more creatures. And it looks like they're not blocking Chasm. They're going for the uh, freer blocks. And then I think they're counting what their life total will be. All 
All right, taking out that big bird. Um, huh. That was exact lethal, apparently. I guess they should have blocked a little more. GG. Xenagos, god of rebels, gives haste and a ton of extra power and toughness to a creature each combat. It's really sweet. Uh, I should say each of their combats. This is a very, very aggressive deck that can deal a lot of damage really fast, oftentimes paired with super high-powered creatures like the new Anzrag. Anzrag's a great addition to Xenagos. Uh, we have ramp into ramp, so that's always good. Our, our deck is running so much early ramp to try and get all your Kazlam out early, but I think that is the right thing to do when it comes to this deck. Oh, Augur Bottom lets them play creatures and lands off the top of their deck, and we are going to play all your Kazlam. Ta-da! Draw a card. Love a turn three, six five a trample. They actually probably have a lot of the key cards from our deck in their deck. Aw, this came in tapped. Nice. This gives a uh, big buffins. Ronus's monument. Nice. This is just like real estate. Utopia sprawl. Turn land into more land. I. I like Ronus for tons of damage or unnatural growth. I'm gonna start with the unnatural growth. Cause I got that one extra floating mana. Go to combat. Attack with Oyer oh, Haslam. I love the 06 Arboreal Grazer. Like, bro, who are you trying to impress? Ooh, we got Titan of Industry that could destroy the monument. We got Pock, and we do have some nice lands too. Since these lands come in untapped, uh, I'm actually going to just grab the Forest and Titan. I will destroy their Ronus's Monument and put a shield on my commander. And I'll hold this Archdruid's Charm so I can fight something. Sounds good. Oh, I guess I should have gotten the lair. I forgot that this is tapping for two. That's something worth killing. Anything that's doing these discounts like this, it'd be nice to kill. Unfortunately, it didn't let me hold priority to my Selvala trigger. Ooh, Garrix Uprising. I don't have anything that would trigger here. Uh, I am going to put a plus one, plus one counter onto the Titan of Industry and have it deal damage to the Goblin. And they are going to leave, because we're going to have a lot of big trampling damage next turn. GG, Xenagos. They don't even know about the God Eternal Ronus yet. Big green ramp versus big green ramp. Um, don't have anything on turn one. I'm still going to keep this, because we're on the play. And say, hey there, Azuzu, who plays lots and lots of lands. Um, I feel like Azuzu, for the most part, I mostly see Pock now. But some people, they just want to put tons of lands into play. And occasionally you'll run into players who are actually playing a Azusa deck in order to get their like daily quest of play however many lands done faster. And I respect that. All right, so they got to turn two Azusa down and they're probably going to find something soon that lets them replay lands from the graveyard so it can get tons and tons and tons and tons of landfall triggers and also always have a land available to play. I am gonna grab, hmm, Hawk or Stomper. Puck, please. Fabled Passage. An even better sacrificing land. And then the One Rings. They get protection this next turn. Drawing cards, maybe lands, putting them into play. Yep, Azusa puts one into play. Oh, up the beans. Draws them a card. Yes, up the beans. Elemental. Oh, All right, I will use the forest here to get two forests. I could go for my commander or Kogla. I like Kogla because it can destroy up the bean stock. And I think I'll destroy the Delighted Halfling since destroying Azusa, I feel like, currently isn't doing that much. Uh, they have protection, so I don't really need to attack here. 
Hawk will sit and be a good kitty. Yes, there is a neat interaction with uh, Hawk and my commander. So if a two-sided card that is a land on one side enters the battlefield, if the back side is a land that had entered the battlefield, for example, with Oyer Kaslam's transformation, you get a copy of the front side of the commander. This also works with Invasion of Zendikar. It's really weird. But that's how it is. This is letting them play lands off the top. We see they have an Emrakul coming up. Cool. Emrakul. Um... I don't have anything too great here. I'm just attack for a bunch of damage. I don't love that that much. I'm gonna play Stomper. This will get me one tapped and one untapped land because Pock is ridiculous. I wish I could get rid of the Ramanop Excavator, because it's going to let them just kind of Fabled Passage, Fabled Passage, Fabled Passage, Fabled Passage. Uh, I will give Kogla the Buffins. Go to combat. They destroy the Corsair of Crufix, but since they already have access to pretty much infinite lands, I'm going to cover up the beans instead. Bring them down to nine life. They'll be able to kill one of these on the turn where uh, they bring out Emrakul. Oh, you know, I could have used Shadow Sphere to destroy the one ring. That actually would have uh, cut off a lot more card draw since, you know, it's the one ring. A lot of cards. I got Emrakul, Ugin, Nissa. A lot of mana. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right there. It gains them more life to go with the Fabled Passage than playing the ones off the top of the deck. Because it's two landfalls versus one. up to 13 life. 14, 15. Mm-hmm. Yes. So true, Azusa. They're making um, one mana here. Want to make sure they're uh, getting the maximum value, I guess. Who are you playing? Am I dead to Nyssa? Um, I have 33 life. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. Oh no, I think this is also one. Uh, 11 forests. So, plus 11, plus 11, and trample. Uh, yes, I was dead to Nyssa, but they don't want that. They want to take my turn. There's not too much you can really do to mess stuff up. You can just attack in with one of these. Um, guess sort of with two, but I don't think you would... Yeah, you kill the Paradise Druid and either Kogla or Pock. Hmm, is this not a May ability? It's not a May ability. Okay, so they have to destroy uh, something, so they destroyed the Goose Egg. This gains me some life. are going for that double block. Okay. Uh, and then they'll probably choose to kill the Corsair of Crufix, not the Ramanop Excavator. 
They could have targeted the ring. Yeah, uh, they could have. But they didn't. All right, creatures are dead. Emrakul is a big happy squiggle monster. But, um... They also set me up quite well, I feel, for the portal to Phyrexia. And they realize this now. Uh, I get, if, if, if Pox survives, I get two lands off this one land. We portal, they left themselves with only three creatures on the board. So I guess we win. Sure, Azusa. Pippin, guard of the Citadel. This is the brother of runes. Uh, this Pippin is very good at protecting your creatures. So I don't actually know what their deck's going to be like other than they can protect their creatures. Um, maybe it's Azorius Aggro. That would be kind of cool. I don't think I've run into an Azorius Aggro deck for a little bit other than like, I guess Geist of St. Traft is really the only one I run into. Behold. Lanawar Loam Speaker. He can block. You ramp, you block. Are you jealous? Hmm, malevolent hermit. So they can counter non creature spells. They're going to make the Sky Marcher Aspirant unblockable by giving him protection from creatures. Nice. I will play one of these and one of these. So next turn I have lots of mana, assuming these are all alive and on the board. Also, uncounterable commander is always good. Thank you, delighted halfling. Oh, they're going to bounce the Lanor Loam Speaker. Um, because this has Vigilance, if I block to, like, try to kill the Hermit, they could just tap it after. Nice, unnatural growth. Oh, uh, your Caslam! Does it get put back into my hand? can't counter it. Don't try to counter it. Nice. All your Caslam's on the battlefield. But does she live? Sarah Paragon lets them replay things from the graveyard. But just little dudes. Oh, and lands. Windswept Teeth can come back from the graveyard. They got their meticulous archive and surveil the creature into the graveyard that they can bring back. They do not have a mana up. So this is probably my best opportunity to try to land unnatural growth. This is going to make my Oyer Kaslim extra chunky. They don't like that. Okay. Well, I did like that, so good game. Uh, Traxa, Praetor's Voice. Atrax is the proliferating commander. Good with planeswalkers, plus one, plus one counters, and poison. My favorite two Atraxa decks that I've built so far are sagas, because you can also proliferate sagas, and poison. I built a toxic deck. It's only a little toxic. I have some turn one ramp into turn two ramp. Considering that they haven't played anything yet, I think this is going to be Planeswalkers. Since if this was the Toxic version of the deck or the Plus One Plus One Counters version of the deck, they would want to get something down really, really early. Okay, here comes a track, so they get to draw a card off Selvala. 
Ooh, do I want to go for Oyarchasm? I want to ramp. And ramp I shall. Pock turns one lands into two lands. We're gonna use those lands to grab another lands. So Pock is a nice chunky 5-5. Five, five. And if we have Pock out when Oyarchasm dies, we can also get our commander back. Because the way that Pock is worded means that if a land enters the battlefield that is one of these gods, or even Invasion of Zendikar, it will make a copy of it. But it will make a copy of it as its front side. So I actually get Oyarchasm back? It's a new instance of, of the card, though. So weird. Okay, Replicating Ring. They have a lot of mana. Well, we'll make it so we have even more mana. Talk with Selvala is extra tasty, too. So we'll tap this. And why do you think I want this much mana that's not green? Sirk and Goreclaw. All your Kazlim. A plus one, plus one counter and a little bit of haste. Uh, sure, Allosaurus Shepherd. And I'm swinging in. Allosaurus Shepherd craves violence, too. The more damage Arya Kaslam deals, the deeper we get to dig into our library and the more cards we get to look at. If this is the Planeswalkers variant of Atraxa, though, there's a good chance of a board wipe, which would be really scary. So I just moved uh, Arya Kaslam back into my hand because I don't trust them to not have a board wipe. And since we already had lands enter the battlefield for Pock, I wouldn't get that weird Pock thing I was mentioning. Our time warping, take an extra turn, make an extra counter on this replicating ring. What you digging for? I have five mana, zero mana, explore. I don't know what they're digging for. But whatever it is, they didn't find it. So good game. Nico Eris. Nico cares about drawing cards and draws cards through shard tokens, which are pretty much just clues, but clues that are enchantments. Hi, Nico. Most of the Nikos I've run into are just Azorius control decks with slightly weaker commanders. So, like, instead of playing Teferi Hero of Dominaria, you play Nico. How you doing, Nico? They're, uh, they're a planeswalker that I feel like Wizards of the Coast kind of forgot about. Introduced them, had them in the story a tiny bit, and now who knows what they're up to. Desparked? Hanging out with Calyx? I don't know. Well, at least we got some mana here. I got Swift Foot Boots, and I'll put the boots on the Druid, and the Druid's going to crave violence. Now she doesn't just have Hexproof when she's untapped. She has Hexproof all of the time, until I tap her for mana to play my commander. So if they look like they have counterspell mana, I don't think I'm going to play it. No, I'm going to go for this Nissa instead. Jawari Disruption. Okay. You got another one of those bad boys? We begin. Yeah, the reason I started with this is because with the boots re-equipped and one more mana, this I think is going to be a lot better. That, to me, looks like it's probably a Tail's End. Let's find out. It wasn't! Look at that! All right, we'll scooch the boots onto all your Kaslam and swing in, dealing six damage, meaning we look at the top six cards of our library and... We got Zerk and Goreclaw and a uh, land. Let's go to the Field of Ruin. I think we got plenty of forests, even for you, Big Nissa. Uh, and now I'm going to move the boots onto Zerk and Goreclaw. What kind of engineering am I in? Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade. Psychozoid. But I haven't worked as one for like five years because I've been a full-time streamer. I used to design human robot interfaces, and all my stuff is gone. Aww. Not even a destroying 
spell. So rude. Uh, I kind of like prime time plus a bit of bootin'. That sounds real good. Oh, they know what's up. Prime time plus boots equals win game. GG. Tatiova, Bensic, Druid. Tatiova's landfall, draw a card, gain a life. It's really good because you kind of want lands anyway. Lands are good, which is actually why I might not keep this hand because it only has two lands. But it does have a land or a loam speaker. So I'm going to keep it and believe in the heart of the cards. It's a good elf. Gets me a third mana. I just need a fourth because that gets me to Nylia, who gives us a discount for Oyer Kaslam. I got a couple draws to do it. There's plenty of lands in the deck. I say this and I'm never going to get lands. Uh, Tatiova, by the way, because she can just hold mana for things that are instant speed land based ramp, also usually does have some counter spells, usually has River's Rebuke and things like that. Um, so we do have to look out for that. I'm going to play the Lanor Loam Speaker. I might end up playing this as a land next turn or playing it as a creature if we draw another land. Ah, perfect. All right, so we got Balaged Recovery. So I'll play as get Valged Sanctuary so I can play Tangled Florahedron, get that ramp going. I'll swing for one. Woo! Nice Lotus Cobra getting that landfall. Blue to Delta gets you two landfall triggers. And a land with a basic of your choice. Yeah, basic pipe of your choice. They didn't go for the shock land. Uh, they just grabbed a basic island. Nice, and just restoration will get them two more lands, sacrificing one for two, and that'll give them three mana. My God, look at them ramp. Look at them go. All right, I guess I can play my commander, or I can play Nissa and destroy their arcane signet, or I can play Primeval Frickin' Titan. Prime time for prime time. We're gonna grab Primeval Titan and I'm gonna grab two lands. One of them's definitely Nykthos. Um, I don't really have to worry about counter spells that much, but I do think Cavern of Souls naming God is kind of cool here because I actually have two different gods. I have Nylia and Oyarkaslam. Oh yeah. We're gonna do our best impression of the Kool-Aid man just slamming through a door. Even more things for me to destroy. I like looking at my Nykthos devotion here, too. Three, four. More devotion, please. Discounting our creatures. Oh, it's so much. It's beautiful. Swinging with that prime time. I would love two more lands. Thank you so much. Uh, Castle Garen Brig and Lair of the Hydra. You know, for more ramp, more fun. We now have eight devotion for Nykthos. Very necessary. They're looking like, uh, what am I doing about this? What are you doing about this? If nothing, I mean, I got a couple of forests here for Nyssa. Could be a mass bounce, though. They do have enough for Cyclonic Rift or River's Rebuke here. Carnstem Portal Sundering. They're going to bounce all your Chasm back into my hand and take an extra turn. Into the north. Gets them a land, which will draw them a card and book them some extra mana. Also gain them a life. Hi, Nissa. Nissa is kind of like a Lotus Cobra Deluxe because when you get her second trigger in a turn, you get an Elf or Elemental. An Elfamental. Let's see what they get. Some Elementals are really, really good, by the way, with Landfall, like Ashaya, who turns her creatures into lands. So good. Uh, how much mana do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my. You can even make it so they can play an additional land. So hey, Tatiova, how's it going? That's a lot of landfall.
loads of mana. Ooh, Terramorphic Expanse for even more landfall, Azusa, so they can play even more, even more lands. This is so much mana. Remember how they were at like 20 life at the start of the turn? 31 now. And counting! Good old Simic doing Simic stuff. Oh, and now all their lands will tap for three mana. Because one wasn't enough. One plus two floating. Oh, Tatiova. Dried of the Elysian Grove. Four mana floating and like bajillion more left over here. Okay, I think that because they can play one extra, one extra, one extra land, plus this, they can play two more lands this turn. Who here entered the battlefield? Entered the battlefield this turn, 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 entered the battlefield this turn. That's a lot of lands. <laughs> Okay, Weather Seed Treaty, get another basic land. They're just gonna keep on drawing and keep on ramping. Oh no, it just keeps going. Yep, nice beans. I can destroy the Nyx Flame Ancient next turn. Might be my best move. Okay, the 15-15 land is coming at me. Uh, I'm gonna chump block with the Elysian Karyotid. I can give something trample into your turns. Ooh, Death Touch actually might make a pretty big difference here. I'm trying to see how much mana I've got. And the minus three, minus three. Bring out Sarah. Where Kaslam? Some booties. Equipping those booties. Going to combat. And attacking with Oyer Kaslam, Nylia. Oh, yeah, Nylia could block. I forgot. I forgot that she's indestructible. Uh, we're gonna search for two lands. Two forests. Oh, your Chasm. Going to still get some damage through because of that trample with Death Touch. Dies. Move my commander to command zone? Actually, no. I think I'm fine with it being a land. Let's see what we got here. Okay, Reclamation Sage and a Forest. I'm gonna grab both of those. Uh, I'm gonna wreck the uh, Nyx Bloom Ancient. Gonna wreck it. Pay a whole lot of life for this little Nyssa. And now, let's see how long this turn lasts. By the way, the, the reason I was getting rid of this is because them giving trample to something like this, this forest could be really tough for me to deal with. All right, we'll see how long this turn takes while I continue to browse through the internet and look at silly pictures of things. Yup, those are some good silly pictures. Did you know that they still post silly pictures of cats on the internet? Some things never change. They become more corporate, more streamlined. But you can still find good silly pictures of cats online. And for that, I'm so eternally grateful. Oh my god, I can play so many lands in a turn. Hi there! How you doing?
Uh, hey. Hmm, Cityscape Leveler. Gonna kill Sarah? No, taking out the prime time. Does keep getting me lands, that's fair. I imagine everything's just gonna swing at... All right, big thing at my face, everything else at Nyssa. They can certainly sacrifice some of these. Listen, you can replay Tatiova so many times. You have so much mana. I will kill your Tatiova. Ooh, they're changing them to all three attack Nyssa. Uh, I, I'm gonna block their Nyssa. Bye, Nyssa. Ooh, look at that, it's a land. Um, I still have pretty high devotion even without that. So I can flip this back over. Whoosh. Gives me even more devotion since the front face has got those. It is tapped though. Um, let's dig. Graveyard. Let's float some mana. Activate Nylia again. Is that a critter? There's one! Sark and Goraclaw! That's a good one. Gives things trample. Got a little haste. Counter spell! I can only prevent my gods from being countered, but oh my god. How dare you! Giving Sarah a little bit. Oh, hexproof and haste. Uh, and I guess I'll activate Nylia one more time. Uh, the reason for this is because she's already giving all these other things hexproof. In this way, she can't get blasted by the cityscape leveler. They can destroy the booties, though. Let's see what they draw. If it's a land, they can keep on going. Yep, they drew a land, get a land, get a lot of mana. What's it gonna be? Titan of Industry will allow me to destroy the cityscape leveler next turn. Ooh, Vorinclex. Going to double their tokens and have mine. Uh, I don't have many things that ha or, uh, counters. I don't have that many things that have counters. Um, like, I have that Nyssa, but I don't have that many Planeswalkers. Because two of these are mana-producing creatures, I can also tap them on demand in order to give them Death Touch. It's like the city skip leveler swinging in. Same with the uh, thick forest. They're going to destroy all your chasm again. That's fine. I think this time I'll throw it to the command zone. I will block each of these. And I'm going to prevent a little bit of extra damage here. But I can't tap Nylia on command. I can tap these on demand. Why is the stuff glowing? Don't question it. Perfect. That's a threat that's been uh, at least temporarily eliminated. They'll be able to attack with it one more time by unearthing it. That lands. Sure, let's go for it. Titan of Industry. We are going to destroy, make a rhino. Uh, I'm going to destroy the Dryad of the Elysian Grove over Druid class, since they've already used it to animate. Bring out your Kaslim. I'm going to give Kaslim these booties, because I want that nice on hit ability here. Still has that death touch. Everybody else can stay back. They're letting it hit fully. We got Hoof and Pock. Gwenna. Okay, so the Hoof is post-combat, which means it's just a 5-5. Five five. Pock, however, is bigger than a 5-5. Five five. Way bigger. Uh, I am going to use this ability, untap all your Kaslam. I could wait until they target it. I'm not going to bother. Throw the booties back on her. 
All right, so we have a well-protected lineup. As they generate so much value. Yeah, my chat keeps giggling about my opponent's name. I see it. I'm just not acknowledging it before now. You're all very mature. That was it. I get it. I, th I think it's funny too. <laughs> yeah, we should just put on some uh, some mother slash earthbound music because we all love earthbound so much. Yup. Do I have any on here? I know I do. Ah oh, man. All right, fine. Everybody goes back in my hand. Am I dead? I think I'm dead. Because I can only block one thing. Anyway, I guess it would have to be Wayward Sword Tooth. Uh, X equals one. Hello. Tee hee. Am I dead? I'm dead. GG Tatiova. Myth Weaver Hawk. Mono green ramp, kind of like us. But instead of having a big old beat em up commander, they have a big old beat up com beat em up commander that itself is the ramp. Uh, we actually have okay ramp here, but up against the Pawk, we're gonna need our own Pawk. I was just hoping to get some turn one ramp, and we got turn one ramp. I don't actually have anything to do on turn two currently. I might draw some, but turn three, we can. Play the pawk, set up for some uh, some landfall, getting us some more mana, and now I have something to do in turn two. We'll glimpse the core. Perfect. We need mana. They need mana. Doing the pawk thing. Pawk is such a ridiculous card. I really hope that they rework him. It's one of those things where this is a card introduced via alchemy, and there's no reason they can't rework him. They can change one of the things that makes this card so strong. But I guess, why would they do that? Uh, I could go for, like, Gorklaw this turn, too. I'm gonna go for the Pawk, though. Pawk plus value. Mine landed first! What do you think about that, Mythweaver Pawk? On the other side of the battlefield. We're gonna out Pawk the Pawk? Well, Mono Green doesn't have that much removal that's not fight spells. So... Maybe? They played a Pawk after the land, which means we should try to punish that. Um, I have loads of mana here. We're gonna ramp even more. Green, please. Uh, if I play this, then I can also play Kogla. And Kogla says, goodbye, other Mythweaver Pawk. We swing in with our 7-7 seven, seven Pawk. And yes, we out the Pawk deck. GG. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. I hope you liked watching all your chasm be mean, green, and absolutely stomp all over our opponents. This is a really fun deck to pilot because it's green. It's, it's it's green stompy stuff. There's a lot of decks like it, but this one has all your chasm. I'd say that my most similar deck that I've played to this before is uh, probably something like Vorn Klex or Goreclaw, which are both in this deck because they're also big and green and stompy. It's very fun to get to play things that just ramp into chunky creatures and i'd say decks like this keep getting better as we get more ways to stop board wipes and counter spells which are the main things that hurt this deck uh this deck by the way was a suggestion that was voted on in my channel if you'd like to suggest a commander please let me know in the comments below this by the way completes our oyer cycle we have now built decks for all of the monocolored gods from lost caverns of ixalan uh, we got through each of the colors. I'm surprised that this is the last one we did, but we finally got there. Um, if you are looking for the deck list, it's in the description. If you're looking to come say hi to me, twitch.tv slash Amazonians, where I stream almost every single day, you should come over and say hi. Uh, I'm actually about to go play some Minecraft on stream with my friend Boxy. So look, it's not just me here. Sometimes I have friends here too. You don't see that on YouTube. You don't get to see that I have friends on YouTube. You guys just see me talking to myself like a mad woman. Which is actually pretty much what my stream is anyway. But th there's other people who talk back to me. They live inside my computer. Just like how I live inside of yours.
Thank you so much for watching and have a brutal day.